Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Adam and in this episode of Azure Fundamentals, I'm going to show you how to save some money on your Azure services. Stay tuned. In the episode 36, we will learn about multiple ways to reduce the cost of our Azure services. We'll also discover two tools, pricing and TCO calculator, which help us during this process. We will first focus on the factors that can reduce the cost of our Azure services. So we will discuss what are Azure reservations, which consist of reserved instances, reserved capacity, and more. We'll then move to spot pricing for virtual machines, and we'll finish with hybrid use benefits. Then we'll move to tools that help us during this journey, called Azure Pricing Calculator and Total Cost of Ownership Calculator. But let us start with reservations. In Azure, you purchase capacity of the services over time. In case of virtual machine, this simply means performance. And one of the biggest benefits of the cloud is being able to shut this virtual machine down whenever you don't need it, turn it on when you need it, or even scale it up and down whenever that's necessary. And the best part is, is that you will only pay for the usage. So the usage means the cost of the service. But what happens if you have a different kind of workload, a workload that does not need those benefits of the cloud, a very stable workload that will constantly consume one virtual core of that virtual machine over time. And you won't be shutting it down or scaling up this virtual machine. Therefore, you're losing those benefits of the cloud. Does that mean you have no way to reduce the cost of that virtual machine? Well, there is a way and it's by using Azure reservations. And let me show you that using an example. Let's say we purchase a virtual machine with one virtual core and this virtual machine price is $50 per month. If you buy that virtual machine and you will use it for one week, this will cost you $12. If you purchase that for one month, that's of course 50. If you will use that virtual machine constantly throughout the year, this will cost you $600. But if you know you will be using it for this long period of one year, what if you could reserve that virtual machine and get a discount for that? If you do it and you reserve that capacity, if you will commit yourself to that one virtual core capacity of that virtual machine for entire year, Microsoft will give you a discount. And when you do it, the cost of this virtual machine will suddenly drop to $360 a year. And by that, the cost of our virtual machine per month drops to $30. That means we're getting 40% discount. But reservations can also be made for longer period of three years. In this case, you would pay $720 for three years of that virtual machine, making it only $20 per month or 60% discount of the total price. This is an amazing way to save a lot of money if you have a lot of stable workloads, especially in large environments which rely on certain services running all the time. There are three types of reservations that you can make in Azure. Reserved instances, meaning that you reserve the virtual machine performance, where you reserve the SKU, the compute power of your virtual machines. You can also reserve capacity for platform as a service offerings like Azure Storage, SQL databases, Databricks units, Cosmos DB reuse, etc, etc. And besides that, you can also make reservations for software plans. At this point in time, this means reserving the licensing costs for operating systems like Red Hat. Just remember that those reservations are made for one or three year periods. Next up, we have spot pricing for virtual machines. Imagine this box represents the data center capacity for virtual machines. When customers purchase virtual machines, certain part of that capacity is being used. But at the same time, Microsoft needs to be able to have a lot of unused capacity in order to meet growing demand and those auto scaling features of the cloud. So they need to have a reserve of the capacity whenever customers need it. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could use that unused capacity at the discount? Well, you can. And this is exactly what spot virtual machines are. You can buy that unused capacity at a significant discount. If Microsoft will need that capacity back, they can take it at any time. And depending on the capacity that is left in the data center, you will get a different discount. So if there's a very little capacity that is being unused, the discount will be very low. Therefore, the price of the spot VM will increase. If there's a lot of unused capacity, 
the discount will be very high. Therefore, your cost of the virtual machine, the price, will be very low. So let me summarize how this works. You purchase a regular virtual machine in Azure, except it is a spot virtual machine, and you get a significant discount to the price of that virtual machine. But the trade-off here is that Microsoft can take away that capacity at any time without any notice. But additionally, depending on the unused capacity, the price will change. Therefore, you have additional feature which allows you to set the maximum price that you want to pay. And if the price of the virtual machine will go above this threshold, you can evict this virtual machine. And if it will grow, but it will be below the threshold, you can still keep it. So the important question here is why would we want to purchase a spot virtual machine? It is really awesome for those interruptible workloads. If you can create a service that will take advantage of those spot virtual machines, for example, for batch processing, maybe dev test environments, or large compute workloads, especially those non-critical tasks, you can save a lot of money on virtual machines. But it is important those are non-critical tasks because Microsoft can take away those virtual machines at any time if there's a low capacity available. But that huge discount might be something that still will be good enough for you to take an interest in spot virtual machines. And the third way to reduce the cost of our Azure services is called hybrid use benefit. Imagine a scenario where in your on-premise data center, you have a virtual machine with one virtual core running Windows Server. Because this virtual machine is running Windows Server, that means you also purchased a license for a Windows Server for one core. When you migrate this workload to Azure, you will also create a virtual machine of the same size with one virtual core. And you will pay the price for the compute power with one virtual core assigned. But because this virtual machine is using Windows, you will also need to choose Windows virtual machine in Azure. Therefore, your price for the virtual machine will also include the cost of the license. When you go to any kind of calculator in Azure, you will very quickly notice that the price for Windows machines is always higher than when comparing those to a Linux machine. This is because a Linux like Ubuntu is free, whereas for Windows, you need to pay for the Windows Server licenses. But in this scenario, you already have the license for your Windows Server, and then you're paying additionally the cost of the license in cloud. That doesn't make sense. And this is where hybrid use comes into play. You can use this license in the cloud by selecting hybrid benefit when you create your virtual machine. When you do it, it will remove the cost of the license associated with the virtual machine. Therefore, the cost of your virtual machine will be only associated with the compute power. If you combine the hybrid use benefit with Azure reservations, you can significantly reduce the cost of your Azure environments. Hybrid benefits allows you to use existing licenses that you already purchased for Windows Server, Red Hat, SUSE, or SQL Server in Azure. For the first three, we're talking about the operating system costs on Azure virtual machines. But when it comes to SQL Server, you can significantly reduce the price of Azure SQL databases, Azure SQL managed instances, SQL Server on virtual machine, and even Data Factory running SQL Server integration services. So it's definitely worth to check out what is your inventory of licenses that you already have. Maybe you can reduce the cost of your Azure environment already. And there are two tools that we need to mention when it comes to cost reduction. Those are Azure Pricing Calculator, which we already saw in the previous episode. In this pricing calculator, you choose the service that you want to use. Then you adjust the variables, the parameters for the service, and you review the cost. Let me show you how this works with one more example. I can go to the website called azure.com slash pricing slash calculator. On this website, the pricing calculator will allow me to estimate the cost of my Azure services. For example, let's select a virtual machine. I'm selecting a virtual machine because it will allow me to also show you those hybrid benefits and reservations using the single example. When selected, you can scroll down to find your virtual machine estimation. Our focus today is not on the basic parameters of this virtual machine, but we are more interested in the saving options section. Notice that the price of the virtual machine currently is $152. 
And this price consists of two parts. One is the compute power of the virtual machine for $85 per month. But additionally, because this is a Windows server, we need to pay $67 for a Windows license. So if this would be a very predictable workload that we want to run for entire year, we can make a reservation for this virtual machine, which will suddenly drop from $80 to $57. If we know this virtual machine would be running for three years, we can make three years reservation. Therefore, drop this even further to only $37 per month for the compute power. But if you also have Windows license already purchased in your company and you have software assurance, you can select Azure Hybrid Benefit, which will drop the price to zero because you have the license, so you don't want to be charged second time in Azure. This will significantly reduce the price of your Azure services. And the second tool that we'll learn about today is called Total Cost of Ownership Calculator. This calculator is very interesting because it allows you to compare the cost of running certain workloads in your data center versus Azure. And the process is also very simple. First, you define your workloads that you have in your data center. Then you adjust some assumptions like the cost of labor, cost of the licenses. You adjust what kind of things you would want to leverage in Azure. And then you are presented with a report which shows you the comparison of running that particular workload in Azure versus your own data center. Let me show you how this works. On the pricing page on TCO slash calculator, you can find total cost of ownership calculator. And this process is, as I said, three step process. First, we need to define our workloads. So in this section, we need to add how many servers do we have in our data center by selecting add server workload. In here, we can give it a name, make some adjustment. For instance, whether this is a physical server or a virtual machine, what kind of operating system does it run? What kind of license does it have? And all the other parameters. Then you scroll down to the database section. Again, you can add what kind of databases are you running in your on-premise environments. You scroll even further, you can add some storage solutions. You can estimate networking that is going out of your data center. And then when you already defined all the workloads, you simply hit next. In the second tab, we adjust our assumptions by selecting what kind of currency do we want to use for this report? Do we have the software assurance coverage for our Windows Server and SQL Server licenses? Do we want to use Geo redundant storages for Azure storage? Do we want to use B-series virtual machine, which are the cheapest virtual machines available? and a lot of different factors that make up for the cost of running data center. And then you click next. And on the last page, we'll be presented with a report. This report will show us how much money we can save when we move our workloads to Azure over a five year period. And of course, this depends on what kind of workloads we are running and what kind of assumptions did we make on our second page. I would save $83,000 over the course of five years. And this is because it assumes that I use all those cool benefits like hybrid benefits, Azure reservations, B-series virtual machines, etc., etc. It is very important that you adjust those assumptions based on your current use case and what you have available in your company and what kind of workloads you're running. That makes incredible difference in the final estimations. And then you can see the charts and those charts will outline things that we typically don't think about. For example, what is the estimated networking cost of running on-premise data center? Or what is the IT labor cost? And pretty much that's what Azure total cost of ownership delivers. So let me summarize this episode. We've learned about cost reduction methods using Azure reservations, things like reserved instances, reserved capacity, software plans, etc., etc. This is where you can purchase Azure services and reserve, make a commitment for one or three years to get significant discounts. You can also use Azure spot pricing for your virtual machines. So use that unused capacity in the data center at a significant discount. Remember about this disadvantage that this capacity can be taken at any time, but it has its own very good use cases. Additionally, remember to take advantage of hybrid use benefits if you have some existing licenses. 
this will significantly reduce the cost of your Azure workloads. And when it comes to tools, two tools that we've learned in the last two episodes are Pricing Calculator, which allows you to estimate the cost of your Azure services before making the purchase, but also Total Cost of Ownership Calculator, which allows you to compare running workloads in your on-premises data centers versus running them in Azure. All the materials and reference topics can be found on my website on episode 36. Feel free to check them out. And that's it for today. If you like my work, support the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. And as always, see you in the next one.